Welcome to AHA. That's the name of the show, which means a human among humans. Okay. And, and we're talking about IFS, internal family systems. And we were um, laying out the basis, which we maybe can summarize in at most two minutes now. Okay. The five essentials. Um, you want to do it? I'll try and you okay. can help me. All right. There's exiles. A little girl who sees a kitty cat and then hears loud screaming noises again and again by a psychologist who's teaching how he can do these things. And so she sees the cat and is in trauma. That's, and that pain is so much hard she pushes it away. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to be touched by people because that brings up that pain. Okay. So that's exiles. And now she has to protect herself. This is painful, right? Right. She's so she has a manager that says, okay, I'll go to these dances where everybody's bumping into each other, right? <laughs> um, be careful, men could hurt you, or anybody actually. So I, I want to just be very standoffish. I might consider going into the nunnery. So that's a manager, right? Mm -hmm. Now a firefighter might be if she is, at that trauma's beginning to come up and, you know, because Somebody falls in love with her, she's a lovely person, mm -hmm. and he wants to go out with her, and she doesn't want to do that, and she starts um, either binging, so she's so fat that no one will like her. That's a firefighter, right? That is, right. So, so no one's going to touch, no one's going to want to touch me, mm -hmm. I'm one big bundle of lard. Well, it's also a way to not, not have your own feelings, you know. Also. Yeah, right, right. So See. she's, so we've gotten exiles. Painful managers managing the situation. Fire, oh, they're both protecting you. There's two protectors, managers and firefighters. That's right. Yeah. And so that's the three basics, and then there's, and there's just the self. Is that the last? Yeah, and exiles are called exiles because they are exiled from our experience by. Yeah, our I don't want to feel that thing. Yeah. yeah right. Okay. Yeah. And so we've just discovered, just very simply, exiles and two forms of protectors. Mm -hmm. And we've discussed in the first show, we can begin to have compassion for these, all these the protectors, because they stop us from feeling this unbearable pain. Right, we're talking about appreciating our protectors, yes. and then they're generally they're criticized. Good job. I, you know, I, I wake up in the nunnery, I might after a while leave after 10 years, but thank you mm -hmm. for keeping me away from that. And then there's a way to begin to deal with the managers, the firefighters, and the exiles. Mm -hmm. And we started talking about it, putting our hand on our heart, and discovering, oh my, I didn't know I was keeping away from my feelings so long. Mm -hmm. Starting to. I have some, I like the Tin Man and the Wizard of Oz. I have a heart. Wow. And I can, feel love and appreciation for what these managers and firefighters have done and me and maybe begin to have compassion for that traumatized little girl yes right as, as, as going going slowly into that system and then you know what what this model says is that we become primary caretakers of ourself and then others including therapists can be secondary caretakers that's very that's so but, respectful. But it's, well, it's wonderful because it takes tremendous, um, terrible burdens off um, of romantic relationships, which are very burdened by, you know, desperate hopes of, of um, Someone rescue. Someone rescue. Yeah. Absolutely. And like, well, finally, I've got this one person who's going to rescue me and make it all up to me, which, of course, is a burden that no partnership can really bear. No. So if we become, Even though some men have fantasies, I, I will can save, do it. I will save you, With or or women to see a a, right. a handsome man who's in oh. trouble. Oh, uh, my love will. happens all the time. With all and you mentioned another word that we mentioned in the first part, burden. Right. And the burden is, if I learning from you, you said it so clearly, a burden is if I'm a little girl and I'm, I. And my desire to play with a kitty cat is so traumatized. That desire for touch, mm -hmm. touch and affection, even innocent touch and affection, is burdened with all this trauma. 
and I might think touching is whatever I think, or, yeah. but all those feelings burdening this nice impulse to touch, right? Mm -hmm. Which is something we're just born with. It's part of right. our birthright. And so, and when we begin to have compassion for these exiles too, mm -hmm. once the protectors stand. once the protectors trust us enough and have felt like we really understand them and we understand they have a positive intention and we respect their mission, and it's really something to ask a protector, you know, like what is your mission here in this system? And they will tell you either sooner or later. They yes. will actually tell you. I'm here to stop. My little girl from being traumatized right. by touch. The way she was. And, be, and they're always right because they're always referencing some past truth, even though it doesn't show up as a present truth. So it looks but, off. It looks Right, but it's what's happening even at the moment. She's not able to. She's re experiencing it, yeah. And she's not able to really form a, a, a touching, affectionate relationship with it. Mm -hmm. so, so we really have made clear in just 40 minutes internal family system, mm -hmm. except we've left out one part, we've hinted at it, that compassion we feel when we hold our hand on our heart, one way we feel it, that is called in internal family systems the self, is Yeah, that right? the self, and, or, or referred to as self-energy. So. Self energy. Yeah, so you might say, if you're talking to a client, you know, so can you focus that, that hard energy? I don't usually use self because it's so an abstract word. Yeah. Even though it's it is the word of the model. Yeah. But if I would might say, so can you focus that hard energy on that protector? Can it feel? Can it feel that? That's you know, beautiful. Is it, is it able to receive that? Yeah. Does people cry in your office? Or? Well, sometimes, yeah. That's it's very, very, very touchy. Yeah, very yeah. moving. And you might cry too. I don't know if you're allowed to. Is the purpose. Well, if you do, you do. Because if you well, if you move, I it's see. very beautiful. And yeah. and sa there's sadness to it. Well, I've spent all this time protecting myself, and now mm. how easy it is. Who would have known? Just to let that energy in. So energy. if we start feeling love, mm -hmm. loving compassion for the wounded little girl in us, how does that help? Her? unburden and get back again, that mm -hmm. affectionate. Well, first of all, she starts receiving some of that, either either easily, like, wow, where were you before, or, or with great difficulty. But if you're patient and you keep holding that energy with, with a client or with yourself, um, then she will get to an experience of, like, I am not alone. Like, I've been alone all these That's years. That's very lonely. I am not alone, yes. and there is this warmth and energy, com good, f coming towards me. But then there's in the in the model itself, and I don't find this always needs to happen. Sometimes that just that energy just releases everything, and it's oh, so it's very spontaneous and organic. And not, and not actually being held by the therapist. Not physically. Right, although she might, as homework, practice. Yeah. <laughs> being held, holding herself. Sure. And often it is happening internally. My, my therapist actually told me once to just hug myself, which yeah. helped a lot. Yeah, it, wasn't that good? Yes, very helpful. Yeah. And then she might get brave and start going in maybe careful, controlled situations. Mm -hmm. Maybe a hugging class mm. where they would just hug and not, and not, nothing there more. There cuddle parties. Yes, cuddle yeah. parties. <laughs> and nothing, they're really very, very mm. regulated. I think they are. They're not, not sexual. They're not erotic at all. No. So oh, when she could begin to feel that touching is lovely, mm -hmm. and so there. So is, what happens to all those other feelings, the trauma? Well, and that's a great question because there's a there's a. I have found that what we call unburdening can be spontaneous and organic and just happen naturally, but there is a protocol for that, which is once the exile has received that energy and is beginning to feel not alone. You can ask that girl or boy part, or whatever, is it, does it, or do you feel ready to let go of that stuff? Oh, so it might just be a verbal... Yeah, and well, and then there's a ritual. If, 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 the, if you're at the point where you say, do you feel ready to let go of that yet? And I'd always be being sure that you're not rushing anything. 
because your manager wants to do it, you know, like. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I want to be healed yeah. now. Yeah. So now. Right. Or, you know, we have to we have to answer. Yes, right? the therapy session. Yes. Right. Or I want to feel really competent or whatever. So you have to be sure that you're really doing it at the pace of the child. But then you say, you feel ready to let go of that stuff. And what if the child says, yeah. And you say, would you like some help in knowing how to do that? And what if the child says, sure. And then you can offer a ritual, kind of a shamanic ritual, which involves, would you like to have that cleansed and dissolved and cleared with light coming through, or water coming through, or wind coming through, or would you like to take it and just bury it really deep in the earth? Mm -hmm. Or would you like to put it in the fire and just see all the molecules disappear? Wow. And so, some very thorough cleansing. And you could, and I'm sure you don't do this, but this could actually be done. It could actually be done. Yes. Although it's generally done inside right, but the very person special, inside the room. But, yes. but it, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, yes, a little, a little bonfire or a little ritual. swimming. Right. Swimming, wow. Or, yeah, uh, I was one, in one group where we someone was buried under leaves. Mm -hmm. Oh, so and then we could be, and then we could be. What was the intention of them being buried? What, what, what was to their feel what it's, intention? To feel what it's like to die, and, mm -hmm. and it would be beautiful, mm -hmm. and you could come up out of. The, so it might not have been releasing a burden. It might have been a different intention. Yes, yes. Right. Yeah. We could release things too this way. Yeah. So yeah. Even swimming, but and it's very verbal too. Right, so it's so we're using words uh, and we're using energy, really. So without oh, the energy, it's nothing. Oh, so it's, oh, because oh, you're really um, sharing your loving energy, not just your words. Mm, yeah. With oh, yeah. so that's very yeah. nice. Yeah. Is and that it, exhausting to you? No, it, if if it's just flowing through you and from you, wow. heart energy, it's actually easy. I mean, you do have to focus and pay attention and track where the person is, but that's kind of with your mind. But with your heart, that's just easy energy if your heart isn't blocked, if you're not trying too hard. So we can also, these protectors then, that we're keeping her away from mm -hmm. finding a partner, yeah. including her overweightness. Wait, that's a firefighter. I'm learning. Yeah, firefighter, right. Firefighter, binge, binge, binge. No one's going to like right. me. I don't have to worry about being touched. <laughs> and, and, and you're lonely for the touch, of course, but even that's frightening. Well, sure. And, and, and what is and that? Could, well, then, it, I think loneliness is just a feeling of, that humans have when, when they're too alone. But then often that will be attacked by a critic trying to manage it, a manager trying to manage it. Don't that. be so lonely. You, you yeah, know, why don't you just you get up and go to the gym or why, you know, like just. So what is that lonely, but if she's lonely for touch, mm -hmm. how, where is that in the system? Is that just a part of her? You know, I don't think of sort of what we call, what I would call, see again, this is just me, right? Yeah. I would call human feelings, and I don't think IFS really addresses this, like grief. You know, what if someone close to you has just died, and you, have, you are in mourning, you are grief-stricken? Is that part? I would say no. That's an experience. An existential experience. You're yes. Having. What if you're lonely because you, for some you're not circumstance, you're not touching people. Or yeah, or let's or say that one, That circumstance um, is that a part, or is that just a, a human existential condition? Now that's you. Is? You, because you're lonely. I'm lonely. Yeah, because you. It's not just a part of me. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm grieving with all my. And I want to grieve with all myself. That's right. So I, I think that you know. Exiles get formed from, from hurt, and protectors then spring up to life with, with a positive intention to help. Uh, but all those parts, I do think, are they're partially you. They're not all of you. And once you unburden an exile, you have to go back to the protectors and see if, like, if we were going to ask the statistician in that girl who became a very, you know, assiduous worker to say, did you notice that the little girl let go of all that into the light? And she might say, okay, I don't need to be a statistician anymore. Or she might say, I don't need to work so hard. Yes, I could be, I could be an energy healer. I could be, a, sure. I could be an could IFS be, therapist. It could be a change, yeah. or it could just be a less extreme position. You know, just like, I love being a statistician, but I don't have to work 
12 hours a day. Yes. I could go out and, you know, see my friends and have dinner. Yeah, uh, so there's lots of us that doesn't, that the, which I like, the model doesn't necessarily have to address, but they're us. My they're loneliness, us. Right. my happiness, my right. excitement, my right. joy. They're, maybe it's not fair to call parts of me, because I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm, that's all of me. Right? All of me is joyful talking with you. Well, you know, we were talking about that a little bit before the show. We were saying, I was saying that, you know, when, when we're born, we just naturally, our birthright is that we're, you know, we're, we're sometimes cranky and hungry and all that I stuff. was all those things. Yeah, well, we all are. But then we also have this natural birthright of joy um, and reaching out um, and engaging with the world and curiosity. Um, yes, and so that would, and that Finding out what's stomp, all there and being delighted, you know, that's how babies... So we can get, that's so how they survive. So They're we so can get cute. that back? We can get that back. That's what is that's underneath still the there. It's the still there in the, the closet. Our children. Or we, we get our inner child back again. Yeah, and then we can have more joy or more touching and reaching to others. Oh, oh so, so when she reaching. is compassionate for the managers, which includes firefighters, the woman, yeah. I mean the protectors, believe my, man, the woman, of our protectors or managers or firefighters or overeating or careful controlling situations. When she's compassionate for all, loving compassion for all of them and they're willing to step aside and let that little girl come out again mm -hmm. in careful situations. Yeah, to yeah they, want, they won't let her cross the street in traffic, but she can, yeah, just, so she can go outside and she can exalt. Oh, she, and and then, then she can learn and get stronger and stronger. Right, absolutely. That and just, I'm sure she'll have a little relapse. And cool. Now, the, mm -hmm. we still have, fortunately, ten more minutes okay. to talk about the heart of IFS, I think. Mm. Which, which is the, the heart, the self. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, you're calling it the heart. You're, that's yes. Your... Now the model calls it the self. That's yes. absolutely correct. I, I love tend, your. Yeah, I the... tend to think it's an awkward way to express to other people, like clients, because what does it really mean? You know, myself, yourself, and right. so so that's why, and it feels more true to me to say heart. No, but but what about you're a very thoughtful person too, to say the least, both of us. So what about? Our head too. Can our head and heart be joined? Well, that's a, that's a very interesting question. I tend to um, what do they what people say privilege. I I tend to privilege the heart. Oh, it's more important in my system to me than is my head. Although I like my head and I like my cognition and I like reading and I like talking and all of that. It feels great. But it feels like a way to play, you know. Whether I'm reading a novel, oh, but the heart is more. The heart is more foundational in wow. my in my experiencing. But that I think. What What would you say to um, about yourself? Because that's really what's interesting. I think is how we all experience. <laughs> One of my. I have the reason I'm attracted to this system. I have Zen masters inside. Talk about that. that and, that's interesting. For since I went away to the University of Chicago at about twenty one. That's for very, very smart people. Yes, I had in my in my um, thought, my mind, and axe my father literally was a firefighter. Right. Isn't that funny? I had an axe, he was a firefighter, and it would chop my head off daily. Mm -hmm. Oh, inside. Inside, inside I would see you, this. That your internal father chopped your head yeah, off Yeah, it's still happening. Well, it, Michael, that's a big deal. <laughs> and it's a gift I've learned from the system. Oh my, it's telling me I need to get more in my heart. And it works. It works. As that's soon as I get it, put my hand on my heart, sometimes it wants to obliterate me entirely. Wow. And then I like, as you said, shamanically, I can get new eyes. Mm -hmm. in, the, in shamanic journeys, you can be obliterated, like sleep does that in some yeah. way, and you can wake up with a new, a new lease on life is what they say, and and just a new a new everything. A new everything. Right. So I as a sh shamanic, so I could feel like my hands would I have a very extreme inner life. They chop off my hands, really at the wrist, so that I can touch people in a well, more heartful way. 
And well, there is something in this model that I just want to bring up because it's, it makes what you're saying makes me think about it, which is that there are sometimes energies that come into us from other people or from other places that aren't ours. So, you know, I would be just curious if that father inside you chopping off your hand every day is a part of you or is actually some other kind of energy. Wow, that's a hard question. It's a hard question. Because I've been living with it for so long. Yeah, that would be something. I mean, we have a, fa a father in us. Right. All of but, us. But, but we, it's our, generally we have characteristics or beliefs. Oh, we, that, that we don't have them inside? I think but the what... actual energy of your father, if it's inside you, yes. you can send it back. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it, it, but it takes a little bit to understand whether it's really just parts of him and parts of you. Um, or... You know, or is it really his energy? Well, I think he was not happy that I was conceived. Yeah. <laughs> I asked him if I was planning. He said, no, but we were eventually having. And it was, as you understand, it was um, when our family went to see the, the play, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Yeah. We all, we all four of us felt, oh, home, <laughs> home, <laughs> our um, family. That was terrible. So... Uh, so there was a lot of high affect in your house. The powerful feelings. Powerful feelings, yeah. So I, th I think my father and mother, who was also trapped in this marriage, um, didn't want me to be. Mm, you know? A, that's a very profound experience. That's not unusual for, for children to feel unwanted. Unwanted, but... So, I, so when I go into my shamanic journeys and... Mm -hmm. And obliterate myself. That's a nice fancy word, and I'm a part of the Sufi community here. Fana, which means obliteration to be for recreation. For but with an intention. For, for recreation, for yes. Recreation, right. So that's really like you know winter and then spring. It's mm -hmm. like, like like our na nature. So, so that's how. So I feel my father, in some part of him, talking about parts, didn't want me to be. So what's that like as you say it just now, as you're saying that? I mean, is it feeling like you're just saying it as the phrase because of your No, I feel, I feel you sad. Feel like, you feel it in your body, right? I feel sad in my face. Mm. I'm in my, oh, my whole body now. So let's just both send some compassion and love to that place. Oh, wow. It's sad. Well, we're doing it. Yeah. We didn't think we'd get into an actual therapy session. We could, do it. We could session. do it in the moment. And I'm getting this for free. This is a high <laughs> price <laughs> therapist. <laughs> and you are too. We're, we, we're not asking yet for contributions. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just see if you aren't, aren't a TV personality for a minute, which we will, I think everybody out there is going to allow this for you. Let's just see if, if we can send some energy to the sadness. And see if it's able to just receive that, just even knowing that it's only got a moment or so before you're back on the air. Mm. Just knowing that only have a moment, but would it would be willing to just take that in? You don't even have to tell us. You don't have to be make a report on it. Feels great. Feel like crying. Mm. Sadness came forward a little bit. Happy crying. Yeah. Well. I don't know. Well. And and you? Would you say we do? Can we give this gift to you too, or not? Mm, that sounds great. Why not? Okay. Yeah. So I also, as you, as you actually know, Michael. I had um, certainly a lack of parenting, lack of loving, lack of appreciation of who I was. And um, I mean, I was actually even afraid to invite my mother to my wedding because I knew she wouldn't come. And I knew if I did invite her, she'd be mad. But I didn't understand that she couldn't come. And if I didn't invite her, she'd be mad. So guess what? I invited her. She didn't come. And then she accused me of not having invited her. <laughs> So it was sort of a, let's call it a, you know, a lose-lose proposition. So in our last two minutes, can we do anything that's to... Well, so let's just 
spend a minute here sending energy to that girl who was, I mean, I, by then, that, that time in my life, I was, uh, I was old enough to not be a child, but, but alive enough to be scared. So just to send to that scared place in her, mm. just to send that healing energy to yeah. her. So what I can say on her behalf is that she knows we're here and that it's heartening for her to know that I got through it and that she doesn't have to be left back there. That just came up. That was pretty spontaneous. Well, yeah. And by she doesn't have to be left back there, you mean? We have 50 well, seconds. If I, if I connect with her, she's not alone. She's not alone there? Yeah. Oh, she was alone with that. Yeah, with that dilemma. Oh, that she's, she has... You and I with her? Yeah. Wow. Great. Much better. Well, what's final in our last um, 40 seconds? What? How should we say goodbye? I don't know. We're just really glad everybody came with us. Wow. Well, let's see, Lynn. I hope this is helpful. It's helpful to us. Yes. yes. In a surprising way. Yeah. Who knew? Yes. You never know. <laughs>